Followed by the Zac. Not a whole lot different than we saw the last time. Obviously, except different teams banning different things due to side priority. Back over to G2 for 20 seconds more. So we got the Elise still available. The Braum was banned not, out. In not anymore, the Elise. Yep. Elise has gone. So will it be Braum? We've also got the Maokai, the Kogmo, uh, not Kogmo, Cho'Gath was the one I was going to do. Uh, yeah, Void Monsters, I was going to say, neat fact, Void Monsters have the same nomenclature, structure. Yep, Three apostrophe. letters, apostrophe, then the end of the word. Mm -hmm. Well, Cho'Gath um, will not make an appearance this game. Maokai might, however. G2 have that first pick on blue side. Instead, are they going to value the Braum over Kalista it? Kalista is up as well. And if ever you can get Sven on Kalista, that is a, a good spot to be in. But they also have the Varus. They have defaulted too. So I like this Braum. It worked very well against H2K last, earlier in the week. I think it's a good pick. Yeah. Instantly, the Vitality are going to respond with the Maokai once again. We'll see if Joko ends up taking it. That should be the case. And the Kalista snagged away. That's going to mean Sejuani is picked up by Trick. Once again, it's a very fast pick and ban phase, and G2 have opted to take the Varus yep. at their last of the first pick phase. So, realistically now, G2 is saying, we'll fight you in the Escalation War of Tanks. You've got one so far, we've got two. Uh, Alistair would make sense if they wanted the Tom Kench as well. It's there, but Alistair Kalista is such a great combination. Uh, Braum doesn't punish the laning phase overly hard, and, and Kalista does just fine into that Varus, so they're utilizing some more of this tankiness, the team fighting out of vitality. But they don't have steel back on the Ash this game. No more do they have those arrows that hit just about every time from steel back. Only a couple ended up missing. Yeah, might be a different role for steel back this time around. They had the Cho'Gath feast damage for that Baron, of course, didn't always pan out for them. Uh, but now they have Ren Stacks to contend with, so they'll be able to secure objectives a little easier. The Cassiopeia is banned out as we enter Phase 2, and it's back over to G2 Esports. Maybe Vitality looking for the Talia early on in their rotation. Cassiopeia does a decent job, especially scaling into that lane, as does Orianna. So uh, G2 right now saying maybe they'll get something like a Talia in that middle lane. Of course, the LeBlanc is available. We've also got the Syndra if they want the early game presence. Mm -hmm. Both do just fine into Talia as well. Okay, so Vitality still weighing what they want to ban out last uh, against G2. The timer ticking down and away. Might be the Renekton getting taken away here if they want to blind pick top oh, laner. Yep. <laughs> last second. Yeah, uh, looks like a non-ban for a moment. Yep, had a couple of those this split. But look, Renekton taken away because it's a safe blind pick out of G2. So Vitality can kind of pick the top lane matchup now with that last pick. That is, if they do still want the likes of a Talia. Nah does get banned away by G2, so again, on top. maybe we'll see some of this focus on the Javan for Expect. He played two games of it against H2K earlier this week. Yep. Uh, here's the Nuketuck special, though. Just bring out the Corkster. He's able okay. to dish a lot of damage as well, and it's a safe blind pick for him. Roaming mid laner, um, later game scaling. I wonder what the perks is going to pull out, the Talia, the Lucian, the Syndra, one of these play the picks that can bully it around earlier on in the game. Uh, we're still looking for a top lane matchup here as well. I got baited yesterday with Medic by Splice when they were hovering Kane, and we got really excited, only to turn around and see that the bot lane from Splice was looking at us and <laughs> laughing at us. Those guys will do that from time to time. G2 a little more serious, but they did decide to give us the troll hover for a moment. It is going to be the Cinder, though, so Parks is going to opt into trying to bully out Nuke Duck. And that should be the good platform for G2. If they can get the mid lane ahead, you can push the Corky back, never let him get to the point where he has that late game damage. And as we get later into this draft, Cabochard has been playing a bunch of jacks in solo queue. And one game in LCS. And in one game in LCS as well, you are correct. And that is a good matchup into the Javan when you look at the lane and then going later on. Does he opt into it this time around? It would give Vitality a wicked split push. And really good late game presence. It isn't that tank front line, but it's a good matchup. Yes. And they do, in fact, take it. All right. Surprise. Expect back. Expect once again in a bad matchup. But remember, G2 were the team that picked Javan into Jax in week six of play, knowing it was a bad matchup, knowing they could just force fights using the Javan way earlier than the Jax. And of course, Jax doesn't want to fight. So if you're drafting everything for team fighting, look at what Vitality have. Team fight, team fight, team fight. Ooh, and a Jax. <laughs> that doesn't synergize too well, but if you're taking a four versus four team fight and Jax is split pushing, that's the name of the game for Vitality. Yeah. 
I feel like G2 are going to probably want to gank the teleport even more than they normally do. Wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of presence up on the top side. And yeah, you can really layer a lot of this CC utilizing that Sejuani Braum combination. Well, winter might be coming for the Summoner's Rift. We are in the middle of July, though, so maybe it's a ways away. <laughs> it's raining heavily outside today. <laughs> I don't know so what's happening with what's the weather happening. anymore. It's insane. But right in here, the action is certainly going to be heating up. Yamato Cannon, Young Buck shaking hands to walk off the Rift in. Udathunk and Vitality with a 1 and 0 lead in this series. We already saw a little bit coming into this off the break what a lot of the fans on Twitter were having to say about it. Vitality leading in the popularity vote. We'll see if it's going to stay that way. If they can close out 2 and 0 or if G2 Esports are going to pick back up that equalizer and send us into game 3. <laughs> Three time defending champs. They have been on a resurge since Rift Rivals. But can Vitality take down the new Kings? We're about to find out. Such an important match now for Vitality. We talked about how this isn't an expected win. This isn't something that Vitality were looking at getting a full series win out of, but being only one game away from that as a possibility gives them such good ammunition now to build up in the groups. And look, Vitality have late game insurance. They have side lane presence out of this Jax. Just don't get forced into team fights by G2 early on. That is going to be the trouble. <laughs> and that's very difficult. Yes. They've got a Sejuani, they've got a Syndra. The way that Vitality will have to do that is by very carefully playing around the vision game in the jungle entrances. Yep. Can't get caught. Everybody on G2 has some yeah. form of CC. All right, Vander Steel back very carefully, nosing into the jungle here, or nosing so, into the br river brush, I should say. Vander's already misplayed this game. He's got a couple of seconds if he wants to, but we know that yeah, when you play Moo Cow Alistair, you need to be hitting that cowbell. That I mean, is how you power up. He's got like early game, very early. It's got, he's got like two look, minutes to work with. Look, Wadid was telling us that you just want to run out into that pixel brush in the bot lane river and just start smacking that cowbell yeah we got to keep an eye on him let's see if he can do it in the jungle at least well, but while we're waiting on him we do want to talk about vitality's chances because they are very close few games out from splice who did have a very critical win yesterday however this is a close playoff race right now and if vitality if they can take down g2 i mean there's a lot of hope there's a lot of momentum to build for this team to kick yeah. things off and pushing towards the end of the Hot split. on the heels of Splice. Observers are hovering on this because look, that Maokai sapling, once they get this blue buff low enough, there is we go. enough to secure a blue buff cross map for the Maokai. We've seen a couple of these little starts that help out. That was pretty cool, I'm not it's gonna nice. lie. And now what that means is Expect has to be very careful in the top lane because around about 2 minutes 30 is the time where you could appear top lane if you've had one of these assisted leashes. Same can be said for mid lane and look at how far Perks is pushing up. This is incredibly dangerous. If Joko can get the flash WQ combination, that may be enough for Joko to take down Perks. Oh no, he's oh. checking a little too close. Twisted Advance doesn't even need the flash as he gets a Bramble Smash off, throwing down the sapling, and Nuke Duck is able to get a few more shots off his gun, but Perks has to burn both summoners to get away from that gank. So Trick actually knew this was happening and peeled away from his blue buff in order to compensate. Now, Kabashad looks to try and go down onto the blue buff to get a ward down, but has to get the experience out of the way. I like the start out of Vitality here, trying to get into the lanes early. Without the flash, Perks now is at the mercy of Joko repeat ganking here, because next time Joko could flash W, and that might be enough. But look, Joko now trading with Trick. <laughs> Gets stunned on the way out. All right. And we didn't talk about it in Champion Select, but again, we're seeing the Sejuani Braum combination for team fighting. We know Trick is great uh, getting fights started post six. That was a flash by expect because of how Joko has been in the lanes. Look, Joko already, with three and a half minutes in, has two flashes down from the solo laners of G2. Yeah, it's getting a lot done. Especially with that helpful leash, so just able to clear away even faster, get the experience, and inspire a lot of fear in the G2 squad. You can tell these guys are definitely playing with a little bit of anxiety after that last game. Vander a little bit low in the bottom, and he's not too worried about it on the Salister. He should be able to sustain through a lot of it all, but Steelback, of course, is going to get pushed back by the superior range of Sven in this game. 
And this is the strength of that early game start out of Joko and how it then plays into the rest of the game because normally Trick can't do too much early game, but he's Auto forced flash. to. There we go, follows through, twists advance after he flashes himself and expect has nowhere to go. It's first blood for the Jax. Gets the kill onto the Jax. The importance of returning to those flashless lanes. Trick has desperately tried to farm and counter gank at the same time, but it hasn't been the right time timing window for him as Kabashad is going to have to back away. He gets hit by the tower, but can leap strike away over onto Joko. And look how swiftly Vitality have taken control of the early game. Already first blood in their favor. Yes, indeed. 500 the gold lead right now, and Perks is trying to equalize on that, but level five on both midliners. He takes the Phosphorus Bomb fighting right inside the minions, and he's actually not quite dishing out as much damage as he's able to take, but Nuke Duck was able to Valkyrie away. Kabushard teleporting back into lane after he had backed and picked himself up. A shiny new phage to fight it out against Expect. Mithy moving in to the Vitality Jungle and takes the Blast Cone Express out. So they're getting some vision here, but that's not where the Maokai is. <laughs> Jax is a favorable enough matchup as it is <laughs> into Java. Yeah. Then the jungler comes top twice pre four minutes and you get first blood, you get a phage, and now you say, okay, I basically win this. Yeah, that's when you start typing to your team. Hello, jungler, me <laughs> ganks. Yeah, Kabushad can now stick on to expect in a decent fashion and uh, end up taking control. You can see G2 have the benefit of basically being near undefeated in game twos in a series. But I have a, a, a stat on the other side, quick stat close to Vitality. They've only won one red side game, so everything statistically goes towards G2 here. All right, well, it all lines up, but at the same time, there are a few things I want to direct your attention to with the aforementioned Jax with one kill, if Vitality can execute on that. I really want to see how this goes on later in the game, but, but even in the laning phase, if they keep the jungle pressure on up in the top side, Expect still doesn't have that flash. Kabushar does. Yep. And Kabushad will be able to utilize that to try and get a lead here. You can see, look, they're trying to get vision control top side with Trick being spotted bottom lane now. Kabashad knows he's free to roam into the enemy jungle and just take away anything that he wants here. And get the Scryer's Bloom to make sure he can take out any wards. I think he's just got his eye on some fruit instead. Getting himself nice and healthy. Now Expect will be backing away and he's going to have to take the long trip back as he does not have the teleport available to him as well. But things will definitely slow down a little bit compared to last game. Which was kind of a bloodbath from the get-go. Oh, forward. As soon as I say it, he wants to go. All right, knock back in. Unbreakable is on, but Sven is also there, and they have stopped up Vander for just a second. The Rens are pulled out. Ooh, that was close. Yeah, G2 trying to go aggressive bottom lane, because look at how much of a lead they have accrued here, trying to just get as much as they can before they recall out of this. One thing G2 may opt to do um, that wouldn't benefit their bot lane lead would potentially be to swap topside, but I think actually that would end up hurting them a little bit more than it would help because Expect is still farming decently and Flash is nearly up. So I think it's more likely that G2 will just maintain their lanes for now and try and punish Steelback and Vanda as hard as they can. Oh yeah, Expect now does not want to get anywhere near that Jax for the time being. But let's check back in with that bottom lane because even though Sven and Mithy are in this winning matchup, we saw Steelback honestly impress a lot last game and he has been kind of a mixed bag throughout the course of this split. We've seen him do the KDA player shuffle and just never dive and not do a lot of damage. We've seen him contribute a lot of damage as well. And it's kind of shifted between the first couple weeks and the last couple weeks. Yeah, I levied a lot of criticism towards Steel back in weeks three and a few other games that we've casted of Vitality about how his damage levels are low. You can see now he's basically average with the league, but top lane is where we have to focus here, not on Steel back, because expect there's Sejuani, he's trying to come to help. Ooh, Cabo Shard's gonna be able to get one and the bowl is gonna miss because he flashes away from it. Now if Cabo Shard can get out, that would be the miracle, but he's two and zero kills on this Ooh, Jax already. Joko. Joko coming in, can Cabo Shard stay? alive nature's grasp is gonna root up trick on the retreat path and joko keeps his top laner nice and healthy the cutest most deadly escape tool there joko buying enough time for kabashad to get away with a second kill here and this is what we were saying on the top side now expect doesn't have his flash available once again and that means he is prime target for joko but joko might find perks first 
Ooh, actually hops out oh, of the vision. Hold on a second. Know he's he's there. There. Twist in advance, and all of a sudden, it was a trap, but Trick is coming on in. See if he can get himself off a stun. Just lands the slow here, looking for that permafrost. Nuke Duck going a little bit low, but it's Trick who has to flash under tower range. Vitality are running this early game. Yeah, Vitality had pushed mid lane up because they knew Perks had been in the top side, tried to catch him on the rotation back towards his own lane. But look, G2 trying to compensate, heading up the river with Sven and Mithy. Now, they have been spotted because of the killing the Wraith there. G2 trying to just push back some of this presence that Nuketuck had created. Yeah, Nuketuck's forced to back out of his own lane with Mithy coming in. Can't send a few auto attacks flying, but the Winter's Bite does hurt. So he has to Valkyrie away. A lot of pressure being exerted by the G2 duo laners. Of course, they do have that advantageous matchup. We wanted to talk a little bit more about Steelback, but you're right, it really has all been about this top lane. Cabo Shard is the win condition, and G2 recognize that they need to be able to shut down the Jax. Instead, all they can do is force him away. Yeah, the Crossman blue buff was extremely cool. And uh, G2 with a good response. This is the top lane play that potentially gets them back into the game. Now that Expect is heavily on the back foot, G2 say, okay, let's, let's not keep it in the bottom lane. Let's make sure we're getting more objectives from this. And they get Tower First Blood very handily. But they are able to still answer back on the bottom side. Vitality is by getting a lot of damage onto this tower. May not be able to quite finish it off just yet. But if they should be able to secure that, it gives them yeah, they will get close it. equalizing The new goal. minion wave is in the back of the lane. There we so go. It's fine. Vanda has hit level six. Now, Alistair got a buff that doesn't help him right now, but on level 11 and level 16, he will, of course, get slightly more damage reduction, which, considering Alistair was already being played, it's a nice little extra buff on his ult. Another 5%, less damage to be taken when... Uh, his ult is running, but look, G2 trading the Dragon for the Rift Herald. And this is G2 saying, let's push past this Corky potentially. Let's try and get everything we can. And Vitality saying, okay, look, let's pick up a late game Dragon. This will be great for our Corky, for our Jax, for some of that additional damage. Oh yeah, the Infernal is going to help quite a lot, but G2 once again picking up that Rift Herald. They were able to use it pretty well down in the bottom lane in the previous game. Unfortunately, Saw how the end result of that all was with Vitality's team comp. This time around, we have talked about the win condition. This Jax can be on the split push. Still, the four-man team fight is formidable from Vitality. But G2 have a lot more tools, it seems, to work with right now. They still want to, I feel like, exert a little bit more map pressure. And you can see, once again, Perks has himself roaming shoes early on. And staying alive as well, thanks to the Merc Treads, meaning he won't get CC'd as easily, Whoops. but he's going to have to get through it here. Flashes forward. Oh boy, uh-oh, this I could be back. trouble. I guess that is not enough defense in those Merc Treads. After all, a steel back pulls the Ren Stacks out for a quick kill. And they've stunned up Mithy, but now Vander is exhausted. In comes Trick and Sven. Can they get some revenge? Flag and Dragon, teleport coming for Cabo Shard. They've opted into this fight. The Ice Bullet comes out, keeping him stunned up. Vitality decide, all right. We can just back away, we got ourselves one. I feel like it could have just cancelled that TP from Kabashar. It doesn't really matter at that point for Vitality, but you can see he's very close to his Trinity Force being picked up. Just gonna pick up some of that from the bottom side. That might have gotten him the Trinity Force Colt. <laughs> Kabashar will be okay, but now would they have to play around this because if Kabashar's ever out on the side lane, what G2 need to do to shut down the Jax is either force good fights on the rest of Vitality to drag the Jax over to the rest of the team, or go 2v1 the Jax, go kill him, and make sure the rest of Vitality have nothing they can do on the map. Now, you can do that with the Sejuani, um, with the crowd control at least, but it's not like you've got the Tom Kench to bring a third person there and make sure you have the numbers advancing. So Kabashad will be able to out-duel expect at least in any 1v1 situations if you can get that Triforce, but here comes the 2v1. Kabashad, you uh -oh. knew this was coming. You pushed way too far up. Counter-Strike, he's gonna try to take down Expect with him right now, but he knows there's not a whole lot else he can do, and Perks is even bringing up the rear, and they just keep him slowed. Leaf Strike, not enough. <sighs> Throw down the Dark Sphere, and down he goes. You knew that was coming, because look, you've got no tower behind you, you've got no vision control on the bottom side jungle, and you pushed up basically to the enemy in a tower on the bot lane. Your top lane of your duo lane isn't doing anything. Mid lane is basically in the middle of the map. And when it comes to the minion wave, and look, G2 easily pick up a kill. That's really frustrating that the Cabo Shard ends up getting killed there. Vitality have nothing to regroup with. Sometimes you just done goofed. And uh, here it is again. Thought he had the 1v1. Yeah. Like, in fact, mid lane has pushed up two Nuke Ducks tower. So, yeah, Cabo Shard have no idea 
that this is coming when it comes to vision control. And G2 just pick up an easy kill. Uh, uh, yeah, that's frustrating. And it's on perks, too. I think that's the critical thing right now, is they put it on the big main carry. He needed a kill to get himself back into it after being taken out in the mid lane. But Vitality are focused around this side of the jungle. Mithy clearing away vision. It's 14 minutes in, still a very close game, but G2 hold this lead. I have a very, very vivid memory of, I think it may even have been Cabochard earlier on on Vit um, Vitality a long time ago, when it was with Kasing, that they played a Jax game and just botched it horribly by team fighting around the Jax. So I want to see... They did the same uh, thing pretty recently, too. Improvement. Yeah, that's fair, too. All right, so uh, Riptail did not manage to secure up the tower because Vitality were all there. Well, minus Cabochard. This time he learns his lesson. Doesn't stay down bot. Yeah, I want to see him really sticking it out on the sidelines, but not going too far when the team doesn't have vision. But again, yeah, that's the key. The vision is the key. Look, if they can force G2 back, take out this control ward that um, is in the enemy jungle, G2 won't be able to commit so far to the bottom side to stop Kabashad because if you don't know where the rest of Vitality are, the same can be said. Like, Vitality can actually catch people out while they're moving between lanes. So, I want to see Vitality, if they're looking to play the split push style, actually play it out in a consistent manner. Get the vision down, and only then does Kabashad move forward in the lane. Well, we talked a lot last game about Yamato Cannon and, and what he can bring to the team in terms of fundamentals and basics. And a lot of that comes from drafting and, and straightforward compositions. But when you're talking about split push, you know, we've already seen Vitality struggle with this in the recent past with this Jax. Let's see if they've learned those lessons, if they can adapt, if Yamato Cannon's been able to slap him upside the head the right way. <laughs> Condoning <laughs> physical coaching, like, wow, that's corporal punishment. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, metaphorical slaps. Ah, OK. Yeah. Not a slap bet? No, that's completely different. Because we had a successful That Cho one gas, was won very quickly. <laughs> there, were, there have been Cho'Gas. That, that was a... Uh... Not a smart bet, yeah. but well, look, Vanda at this point can't win them all. Trying to clear out that control ward. Look, G2 fight it, uh, move in, make sure that they have vision control, and suddenly Kabashad doesn't have a whole lot of options. But he's going to swap up to the top side because there actually is vision up there for Vitality. Yeah, game slows down a bit, right? But at the same time. This doesn't seem like it's so bad for Vitality because they have that ticking time bomb that is the Jax. They have the mid lane Corky that we've yeah. seen ridiculous late game damage out of, who's still building towards the Trinity Force, by the way. He kind of stopped along the way to get a Hex Drinker. So it's not like Vitality are going to get a whole lot weaker. And now Nuked up. He's looking for a place to deliver the package. Yeah, but the rest of G2 are here. And there's 20 seconds till this Infernal Drake. They see yeah. Perks on the Corky. They see Perks bot lane. But look, you don't want to start that fight. Um... Vitality, they've kind of got this awkward comp where Sealback's on another engaged champion. They can set it up, but oh, G2 go. Oh, there we go. They got the Nature's Grasp, but let's see if they're able to do it. Glacial Fisher coming in and in hops. Expect, and Sven's able to pick up that kill quickly onto Nuktuk. Kabushar does not decide to TP in and fully commits to this split push. He'll be thunking away at that tower while G2 look to secure the Infernal Drake. And, oh, Vanda wants Flash. to go in. He's fans Both right. looking for a headbutt, can't quite find it. But said they decide to turn their attention over to Trick. The tower gets taken down in all the madness, but the dragon is still aggro. First coming in, looking to scout of the weak, and all he does is separate them. Here comes the teleport now off the backside, but Vander has already fallen to expect. Joko smites the dragon for health, but he knows he can't do it all. Teleport cancelled, Kabushard's back on top, but G2 are going to equalize on Infernals. Yeah, G2 knowing they can just take these trades early on, Expect didn't even have to use his TP, joins in the fight very easily, take down a couple of members of Vitality, they'll get a tower, they'll get the dragon, and they will deter any more pushing from Kabushard, as Kabushard, no TP, means he has no real option for the next few minutes of this game. Oh, crucial move by G2 to swing the gold once again. Now they find themselves 3,000 in the lead as we get closer and closer to that 20 minute mark on the board. G2 Esports, good rotations to deny what Vitality were trying to bring. And it's frustrating, like, Kabashad, why channel the TP in the first place? It's if, a step like, up, it's an improvement uh, right, than okay, committing that's, to it, right? That's fair, that's fair. But I mean, Baby they need to commit stress. to it like here, so that you have the numbers from the beginning. But look, he's focused on the tower because that's what he wants. That's the pure objective, and Vitality should be backing away, but Expect is able to collapse on them. And look, Vitality have already lost this fight. Like, as soon as G2 had everyone there, and there was only three members of Vitality in the river, like, just don't take that fight. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't, he wasn't the only one making the mistake, though, right? Like, I feel sure. like Joko really, really wanted that fight, but he could have just backed away. If they had just lost Vander, 
and they were able to trade more pressure on tower topside, that wouldn't have been so bad. For right, and, and this is where it's difficult to tell without the in-game uh, team audio, whether it's a team call of saying, hey, come, we can fight, we need you to TP, because that then could mean they're gonna fight with a, you know, the impact like this, because look, they're trying to get expect to teleport. Uh, double root, Ooh, they nice wanna block. fight this one, but Kabashard gets denied. Remember, not the forte of Jax, this team fighting, but this time it's Expect who has himself pushed on the bottom side of the map, has that TP and Vitality were unsuccessful in trying to bait it out. Yeah, now it's G2 playing the smart game. They can just back away from this team fight. They know they haven't got to deal with the Maokai ultimate anymore. The only threat they have is Steelback ulting, and that basically is easy to avoid if you're not caught by some other kind of crowd control first, which we already said Vitality have run out of. Yeah. Expect is able to back away. Didn't even teleport at all. Just holding their nerve a little bit better each time. So now Trick comes up towards the top side. He's going to be joined by Mithy and Sven. Try and keep these waves nice and pushed. And honestly, the game's map control is really middle to middle. Three towers to two in favor of G2, but you can see the vision difference. Top side jungle pretty much lit up right now as G2 have themselves a lot of intel on what Vitality are and are not doing. Yep, and they can see Jax in the bottom lane. They know no TP, all these wards. Vitality are going to have to dangerously go in and try and clear out. So I want to go a little bit back to Steelback while we're in a bit of a lull because we, we gave him some credit for really stepping it up. Yep. But I look at his builds and I say, now he's gone back to bad habits. Yes, there's a lot of CC, <laughs> but you need some damage, man. Why is it a second uh, item of QSS? Tell me, Stress. He needs it at some point. And <laughs> this is for Steelback, this is a late QSS, <laughs> a okay? Point. He has built QSS first item <laughs> before. Uh, so this, re this really is to stop a Sejuani ult. Just hitting him and then ending his team fight. The same could be said for a, a Varus right. ult or... All right, I'll give it to him this time. Scatter the weak. I just get, I just get a little control. triggered when I see QSS on Steelback and no other damage items except the Bork. <laughs> All right. it, it's, it is a habit Steelback has had. Yeah. But, but I think really critically right now is we're still waiting on Nuke Duck to finish that Trinity Force. It, it's very late right now. He just buys it. So Nuke Duck, you know, on this Corky has had some really explosive performances, but we just haven't seen it so far this game. And he's finally in this power spike because he missed his window. His window is much later in this game. Um, <laughs> Although Corky, everybody says, you know, Trinity Force Sorcerer Shoes is like the power spike, uh, every item is pretty much a nice spike for Corky. And when you get to four items, you're like, okay, I kill everything that I can even see on the map. All right, so need some more so, time. It, more time, they're fine. The same with Jax. Like, as bad as team fighting with Jax is, there's gonna be a fight. If Jax gets to four items, he will shred any tank he touches as well. Yeah, looked like they were catching on Trick, but he can hop those walls on the pig. So we're gonna see Kabashar go the Titanic Hydra route, the old school Jax route, builds a Blade of the Rune King. We may still see that because to get through some of this tankiness, to be able to catch up to expect in the side lane. Mm -hmm. And what we talked a lot more about last game was that mid lane matchup. And of course, Nuke Duck is on this roam happy Corky. Perks was trying to get the lane pressure, and even though he died once early to that gank, the three-man, I should say, in the mid lane, Perks has had a pretty decent impact in this game, and it seems like he's going to be really crucial for these team fights of G2. And I think this is really what has been a big boon for G2. Since the slump that everybody was talking about, they've now gone back to these meta picks. The Perks knows how to play very well. Inside and out matchups, he knows them. Uh, the Syndra for early game presence, we saw the LeBlanc come out earlier in the week. We have seen Perks go back away from the likes of Illusion, and it fits his playstyle so incredibly well. They can dominate the laning phase and then look to open up in team fights and give G2 real good strength from their middle lane. Oh, yeah. I mean, level advantage compared to New Tech right now, and you can see that big CS differential. Like, the guy is definitely back in lane kingdom. That's for certain. 23 minutes now on the board. Still a pretty sizable gold lead for G2 Esports. Another dragon will be spawning soon. And since the game has kind of slowed down a little bit, be surprised if that might be the place we start to see the fights happening. Of course, Baron is always an option, but nobody's really eyeballing it just yet. I really want to see a Lane Kingdom TV show now. <laughs> <laughs> like, Season following. two. Yeah, exactly. Following Perks, a day in the life. See how he rules over his kingdom in solo queue of Dust Blade everything. Just sits on a, on a throne that is made exclusively of, like, destroyed towers. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I, I mentioned Duskblade, and I want to take another moment of explaining why, for viewers that haven't seen a whole bunch of 714 in competitive, why it isn't so prominent compared to the solo queue destroying Duskblade. Um, look at the number of tanks in this game. You've got Trick on Sichuani, you've got a Maokai, you've got an Alistair. The flat armor penetration of lethality items like Duskblade doesn't really scratch these tanks when you get into this portion of the game. You need the percentage armor penetration. You need the damage reduction from things like Black Cleaver. And that's why Blade of the Rune King builds are going to be superior. Crit builds are going to be superior because they end up doing more damage to tanks in the late game. We are vastly approaching that one. Late game, that is. Perks trying to take away as much as he can from Joko, who tries to farm desperately in his own Raptor camp. It's getting more and more difficult because G2 just keep pushing his pressure. It's a war of attrition that this game has really become. With all the vision invested by G2 up on the top side, you can see that the end game is in sight, and that end game is Baron Nasher at some point. At some point. Vitality are playing this out a, a little better than the last five or so minutes um, than previous. Joker might be caught, though, as they say that. Yeah, maybe that's by design right now. Glacial Fisher comes out, and they're going to be able to separate out Mithy Trick and Headbutt Sven. Still back here, but Expect is coming in for the flank. He flags, he drags, he looks for Joko. Now Vander's in the middle of it all. Cabo Shark trying desperately to get into the fight as Joko has to flash away, narrowly avoiding death by the ultimate of the Syndra. And Mithy quicking, quickly joining the team hops behind Trick, and nobody goes down just yet. Cabo Shard was not quite in there. He might need his lead strike before too long. Counter Strike coming out first. Vitality started that fight because Cabo Shard had actually run up from the bottom lane. They forced the teleport out of Expect, which is the big thing from that. So even though nobody died, a lot of summoners from G2 were used in order to take that fight. The same can be said for Vitality. Look, Flash now down on Cabo, on Joko, on Steelback. Vanda had used his ultimate. Like, a lot of tools were used for the next fight. But Vitality can now focus once again with Cabo shout out on a side lane and actually try and peel G2 across the map. Let's we'll see what they can get done in that timing window. However, G2 do manage to pick up the Cloud Drake, so they'll be able to rotate a little bit faster and try to get on the backs of Vitality. And that's the thing that really Vitality have been doing better over the last five or so minutes, is not overextending. Like, Kabashad hasn't been pushed too far up. He's only been punished the one time now. But look, no flash means he could get exploited in this bottom lane. If you see somebody like Perks come to the bottom lane, try and 2v1 with Expect him, maybe Trick comes down to the bottom lane to take out Kabashad. This is where G2 can look to punish as one of their options. Yep. A lot of fast clear, though, for Cabo Shard as you can keep this push going. And perhaps they're playing a little bit conservatively. You have to sometimes when you're behind the eight ball, you're one game up against the reigning champions, but they've started Baron. Yep, this is to drag out the teleport once again. Look, they're going to spot Cabo Shard coming up on. The there we go. He even is TPing on a ward. Cabo Shard has to commit to this, otherwise G2 will continue the Baron. All right, they've forced him off it for now, but G2 get exactly what they want, so now they will have the teleport advantage by a few minutes when it comes back up for Expect. However, they have to get out alive here. Trick, they want to take this fight. All of a sudden, they get a big amount of damage AoE here, and it looks like Fate's Call is going to pull him back in. Oh, with right. steal back. He gets caught right under the tower right now and left for dead. Expect is able to finish him off. As they go forward, looking for more. Now Vander getting low. Going to get turned into a side of beef in just a second, but now they've turned their attention. Expecting Trick over towards Cabo Shard as Ven fires the last arrow into Vander. Nuke Duck caught out, trying to zig, trying to zag, but he takes the Blast Cone. Gets back to relative safety. He's still got to be careful now. As G2 have all five members up and available. No dual laner for Vitality. It could come down to the smite fight. Joko, though, is caught out. Looks like G2 are peeling off this Baron, looking to take down the tree. Skin the bark is what G2 say. And they'll be able to do it with Perks picking up one more. Nuke Duck and Cabo Shard, the last Vitality member standing. And the weak get scattered. And the weak go down. Trick picks up Cabo. And it looks like Perks is on a killing spree. G2 just cutting right through the rest of the Vitality Forest right here. And G2 will turn back towards the Baron. Oh, it all started with an item buy we talked about 10 minutes ago, Pyra. Now it's a QSS on Steelback. Specifically, Griffith says Juani would to catch him with a straight ultimate. We got a Baron, this should go over to G2, but as we run the replay, Steelback positions himself in between the tower and the wall, trying to take the quick exit out. And if you slow-mo after he gets hit, 
by the glacial prison. Look at how long it takes him to QSS. And he actually, it's a Varasalt that gets him first into then the combo. QSS came first, so Varus ultimate ended up, he got away from it. Uh, ends up getting knocked up after the Sichuani ultimate. So much crowd control and he didn't have a flash available. Yeah. So credit to Sven on that one, catching him first. Then the chain of crowd control out from G2 is able to take through the rest of the fight from there. Look, Vitality trying desperately to contend against the Baron play, but G2 are able to just go and force the fight. They have the numbers advantage. Kavashar can't do anything here. Yep, G2 knew exactly what they needed to do. Once they got the pick off on steel back, it was all too easy, and they were able to just clean up the rest of this fight without losing a single man, moving themselves back towards that Baron pit. And now this is a G2 control game. We've seen this several times. Moving in mass down to the bottom lane. Should be tower number four for G2. Pretty easily with those Baron empowered minions. And Perks is even moving through the jungle to make sure no one can flank them out as they get the Perfus done out, up and on. It looks like Nuke Duck's gonna be the first casualty of this fight, and Steelback is not soon after. In come the cats, but Joko can only meow softly as G2 look to finish this game. Has really exploded in G2's favor over the last minute of the game. Look, Kabashad hasn't had any opportunity to split push in the last 10 minutes, really, for this game, and G2 want to even up the series. They don't want to let Vitality take a 2-0. It's not going to happen this time around, so the last Nexus turret will fall in just about shy of 30 minutes. G2 fire right back. Vitality needed time, but their time has run out. And thanks to Sejuani and Brum, winter has come. G2 picking themselves up the victory to equalize the series. We're going to game three. Better draft out by G2 for this team fighting setup. They deny Vitality. A lot of the composition Vitality had from game one and G2 just forcing fights on Vitality when they weren't prepared. That Jax had to come across the map so many times and that's the difficulty of trying to play this split push game. We've seen a lot of teams now failing at this and G2 showing that maybe they're the experts of picking a bad matchup like the Javan and then just saying, okay, I don't care about the lane matchup, I'm just gonna fight. We're gonna get the fight started, drag the checks across. Vitality don't have the opportunity to play their composition now. Yeah, this definitely wasn't about the early game for G2 Esports. And for Vitality, they've really got to go back to the books and study up harder if they want to pull off a composition like that again. It was so night and day from the straightforward scale and team fight, never die with those tanks in game one, to this game, they just looked lost when they weren't ahead. It's difficult to play this style out because you're waiting, you're playing a waiting game on the Jax to power up, the Corky to power up, and G2 have now shown they are proficient at playing against this style, and it wasn't enough for Vitality. Yeah, well, G2 have tied things up in game two against Vitality, so our analysts are standing by to break down the victory. Uh, uh, definitely a very quick change of pace, different draft to start it off. So why don't we start there, gentlemen? Uh, what was different here coming in on the side of Vitality and G2? Did we see the changes we wanted to see from G2 first off, uh, Henning? Uh, I think G2 is picking a stronger comp compared to last game. I think it makes a lot more sense for the team fighting style that they did end up playing. Also for Vitality, harder to execute. Jax has the last pick, says a lot about this comp. It's not at all as easy as what they did last time, Martin. Yeah, exactly, because this time around, it's actually more built around split pushing. And as we have seen from multiple teams now, it is hard to execute that kind of draft because the other team can so easily force team fights. Sijuani, long range ultis, Javan come flying in from long range. Like, it is very easy to force a team fight right now. So when you have that Jax who's trying to split push, most of the time he's forced to TP or roam into to help his team, try and win a fight, and then Jax loses almost all his value because, again, he wants to dominate the side lane. So G2 basically said, last game, they had the weaker ARAM comp. This game, they drafted a stronger ARAM comp. And, <laughs> funny, funny <laughs> enough, it is easier to execute I, and force these 5 on 5 team there's fights. There's something special to me about calling it drafting an ARAM comp. It just, it makes me that happy. Is the current <laughs> it's actually the current meta. That is, and I, I'm just going to say, that's the sad state of the meta right now is that so often in the space run, who can draft the easiest to execute comp that can 5 on 5 force engages? That's how you win most games right now in the EU LCS. All right, well, G2 won the ARAM draft. Now, it was a pretty rough game for Vitality, but there was kind of one bright point for them across the series that was Joko, and I want to take a look at the early start that he got in the jungle. The cash was highlighted already. It's so nice, we want to watch it twice. Uh, and Henning, thoughts on Joko in general? I don't think there's a lot to say about this one. I think, like, seeing Joko from before, especially what he did last week, like, on 
had a Sejuani game that he didn't really do anything in the early stages. So it's just like a revitalized Joko, it looks like here uh, on Team Vitality, of course. Uh, so like being able to do so much more in the early game, burned both summoners of perks level three, I believe, then went top to get the kill. Like two early kills, burning the summoners, forcing the solo laners of G2 to play so defensively. I'm really happy with the early game from Joko. Definitely a shining shining light in terms of an otherwise difficult game. It felt like we saw a lot of the same decision-making issues from Vitality, though, that we saw in Game 1. G2 continued to punish those, but now it feels like just because of the composition they drafted, yeah. uh, there's just no way out. No, because that, that was kind of the thing about the last game was you could make some of those mistakes as Vitality, not get a massive goal lead in the, in the early game, and then still walk into late game team fights and be superior just by having the better team fighting draft. This time around, they didn't have the better team fighting one. I also think I, I want to highlight Steelback going QSS after he's played the Ruin King on Callista, so he basically deals no damage. He got his Hurricane at 28 minutes. He was not really a threat or anything before that. So there was really not many ways for Vitality to, to win some of these fights. Also with that Jax, obviously, I would have loved to see the Tlet pick maybe instead, who would have been much more valuable in actually forcing 5-on-5 five five team fights. But obviously that's a preference choice here for Kapusha going with Jax. Yeah, I think the big difference from last game is that uh, in game one, they knew what they were doing. Like, they had a clear idea, this is what we want to do, and then they weren't always able to execute that, but the thought was always there. Like, they knew what they were supposed to do. This time, they didn't really know what they were supposed to do. They picked the Jax kind of for the split pushing, but then didn't really go for it, tried to TP in with some weird team fights, so not yeah, really knowing what's Yeah, definitely a little questionable there. So I just want to talk about that specifically because uh, it's, it often seems like from the outside that a team is just clueless and they, don't, they have no plan or whatever. Uh, but it's so hard to actually set up this slow split pushing comp against Sejuani, against Varus, against Syndra, against Javan, like all champions with long range engage tools. So what happens, especially in comps from these teams is Kabajad is, is, is informing his team, I am now split pushing, I'm winning the split push guys, just like, you need to push up mid lane with me so we have two lanes pushing and then he can go for like a 1v1 or take a tower. The moment he says that, his he's guys in the mid lane are like, if we step forward here, there's going to be like three ultis flying over the wall that's going to engage on us and we're going to lose that fight. So we can't do that. So they have to back away. And that means Kapushad is going forward and the other four guys are moving back. And that's what it means Kapushad can't actually split push. So while they have a plan, it is so hard to execute because you need pressure in two lanes at the same time. But the group in the mid lane will always lose the fight and can always get engaged on. That's actually why you need more disengage if you want to run this. Janna, as an example, to stop the enemy from, from fighting you mid, so you can actually split push. But again, these comps need but, perfect execution. Yeah, and I was going to say, you said the, the superior ARAM comp, and Janna doesn't feel like an ARAM pick to me. But that's why if you want to play the split push, you yeah, need yeah. disengage from the guys in the mid lane. Janna, whatever, like, I don't even like it that much, but just as an example. You need something, right? You need yeah, something, yeah. otherwise you will always get engaged on mid, and your split push will never get going. And now, there was one final fight for G2 that was especially good. Of course, they already had a gold lead, but we can look at it now. Uh, just massive back-to-back -back fights leading into the Baron. It feels like, for Vitality, just wrong to take this fight from the start. I think that when you ha have the Jax here, like, you pick him for a reason, and he's one of the best late-game split pushers. Here we're getting to the late game, and you're not having him in the side lane. I think like if you're Vitality at this point, you give up towers, you give up contesting the Baron here, you just let Kabushal split push in the side lane because you can see what he's doing in these team fights. It's so hard to make the Jax work in a five versus five situation. And that's just like when they're full super far behind. There's also a tower in the way right there. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of walk behind in the first place and be like, oh wait, there's a tower, we gotta kill that first. And then they couldn't actually join the fight. And this is obviously just a follow up uh, from G2. At this point, they've already, you know, sitting with a massive advantage. Funny enough, Vitality started the game 2-0 due to Joko going top lane twice. Ended the game with three kills. G2 last game got two kills. So we've actually seen now two games in a row there with the team that had the better team fighting comp. Once they got going, they wouldn't almost surrender any kills to the other team because it's just so hard to kill anyone in that front line. And, and we see these really one-sided games all of a sudden. Well, it's been a series so far all about team fighting between G2 and Vitality. The stage is now set for a thrilling conclusion to this series. When we get back from the break, we'll find out who will come out on top in game.